chapter 6, the book of nature, an unfailing source of instruction. Next to the Bible, nature is to be our great lesson book. To the little child not yet capable of learning from the printed page or being introduced to the routine of the schoolroom, nature presents an unfailing source of instruction and delight. The heart yet not yet hardened by contact with evil is quick to recognize the presence that pervades all created things. The ear is yet, ear is yet undulled by the world's clamor is attentive to the voice that speaks through nature's utterances. And for those of older years, needing continually its silent reminders of the spiritual and eternal, nature's teachings will be no less a source of pleasure and instruction. Used as a textbook in Eden, the whole natural world is designed to be an interpreter of the things of God. To Adam and Eve in their Eden home, nature was full of the knowledge of God, teeming with divine instruction. To their attentive ears, it was vocal with the voice of wisdom. Wisdom spoke to the eye and was received into the heart, for they communed with God in his created works. The book of nature, which spread its living lessons, before them afforded an exhaustless source of instruction and delight. On every leaf of the forest and stone of the mountains, in every shining star in earth and sea and sky, God's name was written. With both the animate and inanimate creation, with leaf and flower and tree, and with every living creature from the leviathan of the waters to the moat in the sunbeam, the dwellers in Eden held converse, gathering from each the secrets of its life. God's glory in the heavens, the innumerable worlds in their orderly revolutions, the balancing of the clouds, Job 37:16, the mysteries of light and sound of day and night, all were objects of study by the pupils of earth's first school. Added lessons since the fall, although the earth was blighted with the curse, nature was still to be man's lesson book. It could not now represent goodness only, for evil was everywhere present marring earth and sea and air with its defiling touch. Where once was written only the character of God, the knowledge of good, was now written also the character of Satan, the knowledge of evil. From nature, which now revealed the knowledge of good and evil, man was to continually to receive warning as to the results of sin. Nature illustrates Bible lessons. Many illustrations from nature are used by the Bible writers, and as we observe the things of the natural world, we shall be enabled under the guiding of the Holy Spirit more fully to understand the lessons of God's Word. In the natural world, God has placed in the hands of the children of men the key to unlock the treasure house of His Word. The unseen is illustrated by the seen. Divine wisdom, eternal truth, infinite grace are understood by the things that God has made. Children should be encouraged to search out in nature the objects that illustrate Bible teachings and to trace in the Bible the similitudes drawn from nature. They should search out both in nature and in holy writ every object representing Christ and those also that he employed in illustrating truth. Thus may they learn to see him in tree and vine, in lily and rose, in sun and star. They may learn to hear his voice in the song of birds, in the sighing of the trees, in the rolling thunder, and in the music of the sea, and every object in nature will repeat to them his precious lessons. To those who thus acquaint themselves with Christ, the earth will never more be a lonely and desolate place. It will be their father's house filled with the presence of him who once dwelt among men. The Bible interprets nature's mysteries. The child, as he comes in contact with nature, will see cause for perplexity. He cannot but recognize the working of antagonistic forces. It is here that nature needs an interpreter. Looking upon the evil manifest even in the natural world, all have the same sorrowful lesson to learn. An enemy hath done this. Matthew 13:28. Only in the light that shines from Calvary can nature's teaching be read aright. Through the story of Bethlehem and the cross, let it be shown how good is to conquer evil and how every blessing that comes to us is a gift of redemption. In briar and thorn, in thistle and tear is represented the evil that blights and mars. In singing bird and opening blossom, in rain and sunshine, in summer breeze and gentle dew, 
in 10,000 objects in nature, from the oak of the forest to the violet that blossoms at its root, is seen the love that restores, and nature still speaks to us of God's goodness. Lesson in the ideal schoolroom. As the dwellers in Eden learn from nature's pages, as Moses discerned God's handwriting on the Arabian plains and mountains, and the child Jesus in the hillside, on the hillsides of Nazareth, so the children of today may learn of him. The unseen is illustrated by the seen. Cultivate a love of nature. Let the mother find time to cultivate in herself and her children a love for the beautiful things of nature. Let her point them to the glories spread out in the heavens, to the thousand forms of beauty that adorn the earth, and then tell them of him who made them all. Thus she can lead their young minds up to the Creator and awake can in their hearts reverence and love for the giver of every blessing. The fields and hills, nature's audience chamber, should be the schoolroom for little children. Her treasures should be their textbook. The lessons thus imprinted upon their minds will not be soon forgotten. Parents may do much to connect their children with God by encouraging them to love the things of nature which he has given them and to recognize the hand of the giver in all they receive. The soil of the heart may thus early be prepared for casting in the precious seeds of truth, which in due time will spring up and bear a rich harvest. Join birds in songs of praise. The little children should come especially close to nature. Instead of putting fashioned shackles upon them, let them be free like the lambs to play in the sweet, fresh sunlight. Point them to shrubs and flowers, the lowly grass and the lofty trees and let them become familiar with their beautiful, varied, and delicate forms. Teach them to see the wisdom and love of God in his created works, and as their hearts swell with joy and grateful love, let them join the birds in their songs of praise. Educate the children and youth to consider the works of the great master artist, and to imitate the attractive graces of nature in their character building. As the love of God wins their hearts, let them bring into their lives the beauty of holiness. So shall they use their capabilities to bless others and to honor God. Point from nature to nature's God. The children need to be given lessons that will nurture in them courage to resist evil. Point them from nature to nature's God, and they will thus become acquainted with the Creator. How can I best teach my children to serve and glorify God? Should be the question occupying the minds of parents. If all heaven is interested in the welfare of the human race, should we not be diligent to do all in our power for the welfare of our children? Nature study strengthens the mind. The glory of God is displayed in his handiwork. Here are mysteries that the mind will become strong in searching out. Minds that have been amused and abused by reading fiction may in nature have an open book and read truth in the works of God around them. All may find themes for study in the simple leaf of the forest tree, the spires of grass covering the earth with their green velvet carpet, the plants and flowers, the stately trees of the forest, the lofty mountains, the granite rocks, the restless ocean, the precious gems of light studding the heavens to make the night beautiful, the exhaustless riches of the sunlight, the solemn glories of the moon, the winter's cold, the summer's heat, the changing recurring seasons in perfect order and harmony, controlled by infinite power. Here are subjects which call for deep thought for the stretch of the imagination. If the frivolous and pleasure-seeking will allow their minds to dwell upon the real and true, the heart cannot be fit but be filled with reverence, and they will adore the God of nature. The contemplation and study of God's character is revealed in his created works will open a field of thought that will draw the mind away from low, debasing, enervating amusements. The knowledge of God's works and ways we can only begin to obtain in this world. The study will be continued throughout eternity. God has provided for man subjects of thought which will bring into, into activity every faculty of the mind. We may read the character of the Creator in the heavens above and the earth beneath, filling the heart with gratitude and thanksgiving. Every nerve and sense will respond to the expressions of God's love in his marvelous works. Nature and the Bible were Jesus' textbooks. 
He, Jesus' education, was gained from heaven-appointed sources, from useful work, from the study of the scriptures, from nature, and from the experiences of life, God's lesson books, full of instruction to all who bring to them the willing hand, the seeing eye, and the understanding heart. His intimate acquaintance with the scriptures shows how diligently his early years were given to the study of God's word, and spread out before him was the great library of God's created works. He who had made all things studied the lessons that his own hand had written in earth and sea and sky. Apart from the unholy ways of the world, he gathered stores of scientific knowledge from nature. He studied the life of plants and animals and the life of man. From his earliest years, he was possessed of one purpose. He lived to bless others. For this, he found resources in nature. New ideas of ways and means flashed into his mind as he studied plant life and animal life. Thus to Jesus, the significance of the word in the works of God was unfolded as he was trying to understand the reason of things. Heavenly beings were his attendants, and the culture of holy thoughts and communings was his. From the first dawning of intelligence, he was constantly growing in spiritual grace and knowledge of truth. Every child may gain knowledge as Jesus did. As we try to become acquainted with our Heavenly Father through His Word, angels will draw near, our minds will be strengthened, our characters will be elevated and refined. Later used by Him and His teaching, the great teacher brought his hearers in contact with nature that they might listen to the voice which speaks in all created things. And as their hearts became tender and their minds receptive, he helped them to interpret the spiritual teaching of the scenes upon which their eyes rested. The parables by means of which he loved to teach lessons of truth show how open his spirit was to the influences of nature and how he delighted to gather the spiritual teaching from the surroundings of daily life. The birds of the air, the lilies of the field, the sower and the seed, the shepherd and the sheep, with these Christ illustrated immortal truth. He drew illustrations also from the events of life, facts of experience familiar to the hearers, the leaven, the hid treasure, the pearl, the fishing net, the lost coin, the prodigal son, the houses on the rock and the sand. In his lessons, there was something to interest every mind, to appeal to every heart. Thus the daily task, instead of being a mere round of toil bereft of higher thoughts, was brightened and uplifted by constant reminders of the spiritual and the unseen. So we should teach. Let the children learn to see in nature an expression of the love and wisdom of God. Let the thought of Him be linked with bird and flower and tree. Let all things seen become to them the interpreters of the unseen, and all the events of life be a means of divine teaching. As they learn thus to study the lessons in all created things, and in all life's experiences show that the same laws which govern the things of nature and the events of life are to control us, that they are given for our good, and that only in obedience to them can we find true happiness and success.